welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So today is Booklist Thursday. Booklist Thursday is something oh. I do with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. We come to you every Thursday with some sort of book thoughts, ideas, recommendations, something bookish related. Um, before I get into that, somebody wants to say hi. Oh, oh. so she's turned into a monster. <laughs> she's no longer this little puppy. I thought that she was going to be, but here she is, say hi. She's the crazy dog that likes to be outside a lot and thinks she's a lap dog even though she, I mean, she's not huge by any means, but um, when we when we went to get her, I thought she was going to be a lot smaller, but we still take, we'll still take her. She's still sweet. She'll probably cuddle up by my feet. Can you sit down? Sit down. Go girl. Okay, so today's video, um, we are going to give you some more book recommendations. Um, both of us had pretty awesome reading years last year in 2021, and so I did a favorites video, Sarah did a favorites video. We had to cut it off somewhere, and so we thought we would come to you today with some almost favorites. And so books that are still recommended by us that we read last year that didn't quite make our favorites list for various reasons. So I've got four books to talk about, um, and we'll just we'll just hop right into it. So first book I want to talk about is *The Woman with the Blue Star* by Pam Genoff. Definitely should have made my favorites list. Um, I was trying to balance out my genres, and so this didn't quite make the favorites of the historical fictions that I read. But still, fantastic book and loved it. So we have 1942. We are in. I think we're in Poland. Um at the Krakow ghetto and we have a couple of characters that we're following. So we have Sadie who's 18, she's living with her parents and when the ghetto was basically emptied, um, her family took refuge in the sewer systems of that city. And then we follow another character, Ella, who is a Polish girl pretty much kind of living a life at ease. I mean, there's some disruptions, but she's not suffering by any means. And she happens to notice Sadie down in the sewer, um, kind of by accident. And then Ella goes into, or starts helping out Sadie and doing her part to, to give them some relief. Um, this is based on a true story. There is a family that, that survived the war by living in the sewer. I can't imagine um, what that was so of course I like stories based on true stories and then I go down rabbit holes and it's fantastic but I really really enjoyed this Pam Genoff is quickly becoming an autobi author for me so fantastic book um, another historical fiction that didn't quite make my list was Yellow Wife by Sadiqwa Johnson um, this one is Civil War which one of my goals was to read more Civil War based historical fictions and I did I read a few of them so we have our main character, Phoebe, and she is a slave, but has some advantages over other slaves because her father is the owner of the plantation. Um, he does love her and respect her and promises her freedom um, when she, I'm going to say when she turns 18. But instead of that life, um, she's forced to leave her only home she's ever known finding herself really thrown into the gosh I don't even know how to explain it thrown into a horrible situation where she becomes the wife of the jailer um, at it's called Devil's Half Acre it's a jail in Richmond Virginia it is actually based on a true place um, where slaves are broken tortured and sold every day and she has to figure out how to survive this. Um, there are parts that were not, I mean, I think I gave it four stars. It's still definitely worth the read. It is still, oh my gosh, there are parts that are hard to read, but I really enjoyed this book, really enjoyed that book. So that almost made the top of, top of the list. Um, then I have Layla by Colleen Hoover. I know I didn't put her on my top, 21 because I still don't know how I feel about this book. I don't even know. 
So it says love can haunt or heal. So we have leads and he meets Layla. They fall in love. They are convinced they're spending the rest of their lives together. Um, but a unexpected attack leaves Layla fighting for her life. And after weeks in the hospital, she's physically recovered, but not quite there from a mental state. So Leeds takes her back to where they fell in love, hoping that they could rekindle what was there. Um, and soon Leeds finds solace in another guest at this B&B that he takes Layla back to, Willow, and forms a really interesting connection that could have a direct conflict with what he's trying to help Layla with. I don't even know how else to explain it. Go into it open-minded and then talk to me because I just, I still don't know how I feel about this book. I, I really liked it, yes. Favorite of the year, wasn't quite up there. Um, but I like when Colleen takes different approach to a story and it's definitely different. It was great. The next one I want to talk about is I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. Absolutely love this book, but I almost DNF'd it. There was the, it, it's a slow start. It's a slow start. So basically it's on the premise of, um, we have Jenna Gray. She's reliving on the remote Welsh coast, trying to escape the memory of a car accident that plays again and again in her mind, desperate to heal from the loss of her child and the rest of her painful past. Um, yeah, really, really good. Just stick with it. Cause there was a point where I almost quit and Sarah's like, nope, keep going. And then literally a few pages later, I was like totally invested and really, really loved it. But I couldn't quite put it on my favorites because of that slow start. And then the last book I want to talk about is The Last House on Needless Street, which I don't know where it is. It's, I don't know, did I borrow it to somebody? I'm not even sure. Um, this is another book kind of like Layla where I just don't know what to think about it. It was wild. It was wild. So we have kind of two characters we're following. We have our main, our I guess main character, her sister went missing and she's still trying to figure out what exactly happened and is kind of digging into the past and trying to, trying to just solve that mystery. And then we have our other character and he is very much a recluse, living alone in a house, the end of Needless Street. And that's all I can tell you. <laughs> just go read it and then talk to me because it's great but what <laughs> so that was really clear it was really clear um anyway so those are my five books that almost made my favorite list still definitely worth picking up still definitely worth reading just had a lot of other really really good books that were in contention so um head over to sarah's channel see what she has as um an additional list of books that didn't quite make her favorites list of 2021 um, otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. What books almost made your list? Let's talk about that. Um, otherwise, yeah, all that fun stuff. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye.